Why Castoriadis is still important today. Interview with Yavar Turinsky. Yavor Turinsky. Excerpts from an interview conducted by Arena Nadeva for the Bulgarian National Radio and aired on the third oh, excuse me, on March second, twenty fifteen. Question. Why is Castoriadis important for you almost 20 years after his death? Response. <laughs> According to me, the analysis offered by Cornelius Castoriadis remains 20 years later as relevant as before. This is because he manages to detect with high accuracy the problems that still surround us today and as a result of whom people do not live well. From the beginning of his writings, he reveals the inherent problems of bureaucracy, the logic of political representation, the consumerist culture, and the capitalist idea of unlimited economic growth. This criticism of his remains evidently abreast for our time. Another important aspect of his thought is the question of significance. According to many, the presence of various myths in ancient societies was a sign of ignorance. Whereas for Castoriadis, every society, to be able to function as such, needs a set of significations. According to him, every society creates its own significations, and the ones of consumerism and political representation are not good enough as social binders. Maybe we can even say that they are among the worst humanity has ever known, and because of this, our societies are degraded. One can suggest that most of the classical... Excuse me, most of the classic ideologies that we know, such as capitalism, communism, and even anarchism, at least to a certain degree, participate in the current imaginary, in the sense that they tend to limit social struggles to fights over the rights to consume, quote, more than before, end quote. Castoriadis says that this is not enough, we need to create new significations. We can give the example of the, quote, Islamic State, end quote, that has managed after centuries to return to the forefront of the Western world the idea of theological totalitarianism. We saw that even people who can be attributed to the Western middle class, who lead so-called satisfying consumerist lifestyles, cho choose instead to go to a foreign place where there is danger for their life, where they will have to kill and live in misery. And all of this because they couldn't find meaning in their relatively cozy lives and went in to search for meaning in God. To this state of insignificance, Castoriadis suggests to deconstruct the current significations and rediscover those of the project of autonomy. It is based on the concept of the individual's active citizen in the classic sense of the term as one that is actively interested and involved in the public affairs that affect his existence. Question. I will quote Castoriadis here when regarding the Athenian democracy. Quote, what were the Athenians up to? Indeed, something very interesting. It's the Greeks who invented elections. It's a historically attested fact. Perhaps they were wrong, but they invented elections. Who was being elected in Athens? The magistrates weren't being elected. The magistrates were being appointed by drawing lots or by rotation. For Aristotle, remember, a citizen is someone who is capable of governing and being governed. Everyone is capable of governing, and so lots are drawn. Why? Because politics is not the business of specialists. There is no science of politics. There is opinion, the doxa of the Greeks. There is no epistemi, end quote, Castoriadis. The politics is not for the specialists, but today we see exactly the opposite. Can politics be returned to the hands of the people so they can be free? Be able to think and chase their dreams without all this to be dressed in difficult terminologies that require specialists. Won't society become dumber if the politicians are not experts? Response. It is important to note that for Castoriadis, direct democracy is not a final goal. According to him, it is a necessary precondition for autonomy to exist, but it is not the only one. Nowadays, the social imaginary is dominated by heteronomy according to which there is slash are extra social sources that navigate our lives beyond our reach, like politicians, historical necessity, gods, or traditions. For example, one can live in a self-managed society in which contradictorily people believe that certain things shouldn't be done because of the demands of the gods. So if people are to take on the road towards autonomy, they should break with the imaginary of heteronomy. Castoriadis tries to demonstrate during all of this, excuse me, 
Castorius Otis tries to demonstrate during all of his life that everything that happens in our society is our own act. He speaks for history as creation, not in a mystic religious sense, but on the imaginary level. It is a matter of choice. It is not coincidental that he gives his examples for autonomous societies, or at least such that get close enough to experience autonomy, the Athenian polis and the self-managed city-states of the Middle Ages. Although he is aware of other cases of self-management throughout history, in these two he saw that the people were not guided by some predetermined final goal. Instead, they engaged in what Castoriadis calls constant interrogation. This is the basis of philosophy. What he called social and individual autonomy means just that. The individual simultaneously as an active citizen, constantly interfering with public affairs, and as a philosopher, constantly doubting all traditions and norms, not necessarily refusing them, but being able to determine them as right or wrong. Concluding words. One big problem today is that when people hear about rearranging society from the bottom up, they immediately ask to know if this has happened somewhere else and how it worked out. This is wrong. Since we can imagine it, we can also implement it in practice. The thing is to take the decision and then the necessary actions to change the political structure of society, a complete paradigm shift.